Welcome to Part 4 of the Guided Tour Series. In this section, we get started with requirements. We will extract requirements into CORE and define relationships. In the rest of this guided tour, you will use CORE to systematically build the sample design for the Autolink system. You can refer to this context diagram and its description as found on page 5 of the guided tour document. You may find it helpful to refer back to this diagram as you build the system structure. This guided tour is designed for use with two monitors. Place the video on one monitor and CORE on another. This will allow you to work along with the video. At times you will be asked to pause the video to complete work that will take more than a few moments. If you only have one monitor, you can still work through this guided tour. You will have to pause more often than suggested. CORE supports top-down, bottom-up, and middle-out engineering processes. For this guided tour, we are using a top-down approach, assuming the Autolink system is an unprecedented system. We will start by extracting and analyzing the requirements from the source requirements documentation. Let's get started with requirements. While some may prefer an automated requirements extraction process, we've found that having a person in the loop eliminates problems that automated parsers can miss, or even create. In CORE, there are parsers that can assist with parsing tabular data, still keeping a person involved in the process. In this guided tour, we will practice manually extracting requirements using the Element Extractor. Start with a blank project open. If you aren't sure how to do that, then go back and review Part 3 of this series. We will start by capturing the relevant information from the source document in CORE. CORE's Element Extractor is an easy way to transfer text from a document into the CORE database. In the Project Explorer, click the Element Extractor icon. Once the Element Extractor opens, you'll need to load your source document. The source document must be either a doc, RTF, HTML, or text file. Click on the Load Document button. Back up to the Core 7 folder and navigate to the Data slash Samples folder. Then select the Autolink source document and click Open. The Autolink source document file displays in the left-hand pane of the Element Extractor, while the element being extracted or created is built and defined in the right-hand Element Definition pane. The attributes and relationship fields vary depending on which class is selected from the class pull-down selection list contained in the Element Definition pane. The Element Extractor can extract text into any class of elements. Select the document class from the pull-down selection list. Many of the attributes for an element can come directly from the source document. In general, to move text from the left pane to a specific element attribute field on the right, highlight the desired text in the left pane and press the transfer button corresponding to the desired attribute. Let's add a description to the document element. In the left pane, highlight the first paragraph under Scope. Click the Description Transfer button in the right pane to transfer the selected text to the Description Attribute field. In the Name field, type Autolink System Requirements Document. The document type attribute is set by choosing from a predefined list of possible values. Click on the down arrow next to the type field and choose System Requirements Document. Once all desired attributes are defined, we need to enter the document element into the System Design Repository. From the Element Extractor window, click the Create Element icon. This enters the element in the System Design Repository. The status line reflects when an element has been saved to the System Design Repository. Our next step is to extract and define our requirement elements from the source document. 
Notice that after we saved the document element, the attribute data is still displayed in the fields. This saves you from re-entering identical attribute values. For the element we are creating here, we won't reuse any attribute values, so we will want to clear the attribute fields before proceeding. Click the Reset Attributes icon on the toolbar to clear previous data from the fields. From the Class Selection list, select Requirement. The Attribute and Relationship fields are now updated to reflect the attributes and relationships for a requirement element. During this extraction process, we want to establish a hierarchy of requirements. In our case, the specific requirements element is refined by a number of subordinate requirements. We will first establish a parent, or top-level requirement, from the specific requirements section of the Autolink source document. You will need to scroll down in the left pane to see this section of the document. Highlight the words Specific Requirements from the text. Click the Name Transfer button to enter the text into the Name field. Type ORD.1 in the Number field. Highlight the text in the document within the Specific Requirements section. Click the Description Transfer button to enter the text into the Description field. To be thorough, you should enter data in the other attribute fields as appropriate. Set the type to composite, as this is a parent requirement and has child level requirements within it. Set the origin to originating, as this requirement originated from the source document. Set the paragraph number to 3.1, referencing the paragraph number in the document. Set the paragraph title to Specific Requirements, referencing the paragraph title in the document. For requirement traceability, we want to establish that this requirement element is documented by the document element named Autolink System Requirements Document. The Documented By relationship identifies the source document, which specifies or enhances the definition of the element. Double-click the Documented By Relationship in the Relationship pane to open the Edit Targets dialog. The Edit Targets dialog is used to edit targets to the selected relationship. It lists the allowable target classes for the specified relationship, which in this case is Documented By. With a target class selected, its possible targets are listed. To enter an element into the Targets pane, select the element in the Possible Targets pane and click Add. Select the Autolink System Requirements document and add it to the list. As soon as the target is added, the new target is added to the target list in the right-hand pane. Click OK to close the Edit Targets dialog. We are now ready to enter this requirement into the repository. Click the Create Element icon on the Element Extractor toolbar. This concludes Part 4 of the Guided Tour. Part 5 will address extracting child-level requirements and viewing the requirement hierarchy. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know. Email me at support at